Hi, it's Dr. Martin Wucher again, and we are busy with the third part of the coronavirus Namibia protocol. So in the last uh, section, we will look at possible treatment options. Um, and I will take you through a journey of what is happening internationally, what are the possibilities, and then what could be done if you were in dire straits in Namibia. Once again, this is a practical summary. Um, people have asked me about the date at the bottom of our little Namibia heart. Initially, I was planning of launching this video series on the 18th of March, but due to the questions and due to the urgency, I rushed the stuff and I compiled it a bit faster than I would have, and I launched it on the 16th of March as we are today. So this is the reason. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've had fun with the other ones. So let's get going with this one. Once again, a warning. The video is not intended to be medical um, treatment. It is just for information and hopefully prevention for you from this ugly virus that can make you sick and possibly even cause permanent damage. So if you want proper treatment, go to a qualified doctor and take it up with him. Right, the first video was background about viruses. The second one was what you can do at home. And this last one is what happens if you really get sick. In other words, if you would be hosp um, hospitalized or if you have to go to a doctor to actually get treatment. Let's look at what's available on the internet today. Mr. Google has been working overtime for now. And as of today, 16, 16th March 2020, Bloomberg, which is really a financial um, group, had this to say. They looked at a, a medical company, and this medical company was busy looking at evaluating and experimental treatments in patients hospitalized with COVID. The drug makers said on Monday, cool, that's good news. So, die saak geniet aandag. In other words, at least they are looking at something. At the bottom, they look at the figures again. So, we have 165,000 people infected or tested positive, And then we have 6,400 fatalities from that. Um, no drugs or vaccines have yet been approved for the novel coronavirus and relating lung illness. Uh -oh. Didn't I say I was going to give you some treatment options? That is not good news. Let's look at something else. Healthline is one of the main internet health information providers. Currently, there isn't a vaccine and antibiotics don't work. So, what to next? Oh, people might need a respirator. Now, does that treat it? Not really. Respirators are pumps. They pump oxygenated air into your lungs. In other words, they help you breathe. Um, because if you really, really sick, breathing on your own is a problem. So it's a machine that helps you breathe, but what about the disease? What about the virus? Okay, they are obviously also looking into this. Um, they talk about some vaccines. Yes, vaccines take a couple of months, if not years. And then as we have seen before, um, an RNA virus mutates quickly. So by the time they have the vaccine, this virus might be long and gone. It's over the next June. So let's see, okay, drugs. Um, below this, they list about four or five drugs, quite old ones like um, chloroquine and stuff, and, but nothing's, nothing's certain and nothing really works at this stage. So ultimately, um, Medscape is another website. It's like Web, um, WebMD. It's also a very prominent and well-known website for medical news and medical resources. And actually, 
they quite honestly say there is nothing that can help us now. Antiviral agents, immunotherapies and vaccines are being investigated. Once again, these sarkhanit are not this by nice, but it doesn't help us. So these guys, which is striking, is once again, they never, never once think of the human immune system. They just think of drugs and vaccination. It's, it's as if the other stuff doesn't exist. Imagine a springbok, imagine a chemsbok, imagine all the animals that we see in our farms. Um, if they didn't have an immune system, <laughs> it's just... So why is it that we as a human species seem to not be able to function without medications? Anyway, let me not disgrace, let me focus on what I want to tell you. If we in trouble, sometimes, really sometimes, in fact very often, it helps to look back at what the people before us did. Um, we often assume that they weren't intelligent and we often assume that they didn't do their homework. And when you look at what they had done with their, knowledge, uh, with their skills and their um, resources, we are often amazed at what they did. They were highly, highly intelligent people. They were people that could observe extremely well. And also often the doctors of that time were people that worked with patients every day. So they could see exactly what they wouldn't sit in some lab and do stuff on rats or, or cell cultures. They were working on patients and they could see pretty quickly um, what was working and what wasn't working. So, oh, this is interesting. Our ancestors sat in the sun. So, obviously, they got a lot of vitamin D. Um, if we look at vitamin D levels in the blood of, you could say, ancient populations or rural populations near the equator today, we find that they've got vitamin D levels around 100, sometimes even 120 nanograms per mole. The average American, the average European, and also the patients that I've tested in Namibia are around about 20 to 40 nanograms um, per mole, unless they start supplementing. So obviously, if you want to have people that are in the range that is a natural range, they should be, as I've said in my other videos, between 80 and 100 nanograms per mole. Once again, you can have it tested if you want to, just to make sure. And the British uh, Medical Journal in 2017, which is three years ago, they did a huge study. Look at all the clever doctors that were involved, assistant professors, associate professors, um, all sorts of really wide awake, hopefully, guys, got together and they found that vitamin D supplementation the prevention of acute respiratory tract infection. Hello? Isn't that what we are looking for? Isn't that what we want when a virus gets into our lungs and messes up all our mucous membranes? So, remember I suggested you guys start with vitamin D as our favorite. So once again, I'm just putting this in to show you that you are on the right track. By the way, if you don't get vitamin D anymore, I have heard that the pharmacies are empty. Remember, if you go and sit in the sun, and before you shoot me down, listen to this. If you sit in the sun around lunchtime, because that's the time the sun is overhead, the, the sun rays come straight down, and they deliver the highest uh, level of ultraviolet B light. And the ultraviolet B, the UVB, when it hits your skin and you've got enough cholesterol in your skin, it gets made into vitamin D. So normally you would sit there for 10 to 15 minutes until you feel a warm tingling um, sensation on your skin and that's enough. Then you go back into, into your rooms. So don't put on any sunscreen, don't put on anything, bear as much skin as you can if you want to boost your vitamin D. For people with dark pigment, you need more time because obviously the pigment blocks out some of that vitamin D. And there are lots of studies from Germany and Europe where the dark pigmented people 
have got even lower levels of vitamin D because obviously there is hardly any sun. And then when your skin is dark, it blocks out some of the vitamin D. So once again, in Namibia, if you want to boost your vitamin D, go and sit in the sun for 15 minutes. Rule of the thumb, one minute in the sun gives you about 1,000 units of vitamin D. So let's go to 1971. This is a little booklet that I had. Um, I got it about 10 years ago while I was researching other stuff, really fascinating stuff. There was a guy, Frederick, Frederick Klenner. Um, he was a medical doctor and a fellow of whatever speciality. Um, I think he was a physician and he worked in North America at the time in a little town. His wife assisted him and he had lots of lots of experience with vitamin D. He used uh, vitamin C. He used it for everything. And this is basically a rundown and a summary of what they found. If you look at this, the flu of 1980 stands out very forcefully in that the cleaners survived when scores about us were dying. Now this is another doctor writing this. Although bitter, it was curative. You know, they're talking about vitamin C that they ate. They stuck it in their mouth. It's a white powder. It looks like sugar. And the molecular structure is very much like sugar. Um, and then they found that they had been taking 10 to 30 grams of vitamin C per day. And that made them survive the flu while they were working between really sick people. That's really interesting. Vitamin C, called ascorbic acid, is a powerful oxidizer. So oxidation, all the, all the toxins in your body, from spider toxins, snake toxins, what have you, they all cause oxyg um, oxidation. And when you put a reducing agent, it's like an anti-rust agent, it will neutralize that toxin. And you can see how it worked for endotoxins, for histamine shock, it worked for virus infections. And initially they, um, they inoculated it into the muscle, eventually they put it into the veins. Okay, this is an interesting part, 1953. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a long time ago, that was 77 years ago. They had a case with viral pneumonia. He was unconscious. His fever was 106, I think, the American way. I don't know. I think it's normally about 104. And he was in hospital. So when he got in there, they gave him 140 grams of ascorbic acid into the veins over three days or two and a half days. After that, she got up and she was sitting in bed and taking fluids by mouth. The temperature was normal. Now... If that was a drug that was developed by a company, that would be a miracle drug. And you could imagine that would cost a couple of thousand bucks. So if we take this knowledge and we wonder why, why is it not available? Where is it now? Um, okay, it is available, but one has to start dinging a bit and you have to know where. So... I said in other videos that possibly you could show this video to your doctor that is treating you or your doctor friend. Please go ahead on the 26th, no hang on, on Thursday the 19th of this month there will be a semi uh, webinar. That's basically in three days this coming uh, Thursday. Um, when which he will be taught there will be discussions about vitamin C for the treatment of coronavirus. So this is absolutely 100% uh, crucial information for your doctors. So please, either if you're interested, you can join that group or even get your doctor to listen to this lot. I sat down and I put in PubMed intra intravenous vitamin C and I got 6.8 million hits. Now, PubMed is a library of scientific articles. And so, is this stuff researched? You bet it is researched. Is there lots of knowledge? You bet there is huge knowledge there. So, in amongst those articles, there was one that was quite recent or more recent. 
and I looked at this thing um, and you can look at the top this is actually my computer screen you can see all my hobbies health series detox okay banking useful online and posture and healing stuff so it's all health stuff and I found this this uh, reference to treatment of coronavirus so medicine net is as I've said is a is a well-known healthcare resource and this is what I found in there Mr. Ji Yong Peng, medical doctor of the Department of Critical Care Medicine at Songnan in Wuhan University. These guys are at the epicenter of the storm. He registered two clinical trials and what he was trying to do, give his patients in this situation vitamin C infusions into the vein. Okay, just like Klenner had done 77 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Why is this stuff gone? Why has it been lost? Okay. So, at the top, the description of the guys involved in that thing said um, it reduces inflammatory response, which is amazing because then the lung can function more, more um, efficiently. And secondly, <clears throat> um, it lowers the severity of influenza and also it has effects against viral pneumonia associated with COVID. And then comes the funny part in this article. However, not all experts agree. Now notice this. It's a person that writes and reviews um, Medicine Net, Dr. Carol de Sarkisner, whatever, Sarkisian. She's a medical doctor. Your immune system does need vitamin D to work right. Yeah, it's good. But extra won't help you avoid a cold. Okay, I thought it wasn't like that. It may make you go away faster or not feel as bad if you were taking it before. So what she's really doing is writing down the findings. Okay, maybe that's her opinion. Let's carry on. Then Dr. Chen. Another guy that you'll, uh, that you'll hear quite a lot about comes along. He's also in, in uh, Wuhan in China. And he says the results of the studies are promising. They administered 24 gram. Remember, Glenna did 140 gram. They only used 24 and they put it into, into the veins and the patients had a significant reduction in inflammation. This is notable because massive inflammation in the lungs may be fatal in this illness. Then comes the next medicine net author, Betty Kovacs. She adds uh, that vitamin C is generally safe, but large doses of vitamin C may cause stomach upset and diarrhea, of course. If you eat, by, by, if you eat lots of magnesium, if you eat lots of um, vitamin C, you get jippos, you get diarrhea, that we all know, and that's what we use to titrate it, in other words, to check how much you must take. It also, she also says, yeah, it, um, there were kidney stones reported. I've got another resource. They did about 100,000 intravenous vitamin C treatments. And they did it over many weeks in these patients because they were cancer patients. They found out of 100,000, they found two patients that had kidney stones. And they reckon that they were probably there beforehand. So, is it a serious concern? Not at all. You monitor the kidneys and you check for certain things before you administer the stuff. So, if you see this weird, weird world where vitamin C clearly has got some major benefits, and then the established medical establishment doesn't like it, then you start wondering what's happening here. I just went and had a look. Who is Medicine Net? Medicine Net, um, and it's operated by WebMD. And ladies and gentlemen, I didn't go any further because I didn't want to go any further. It's not the it's not the focus of this talk. But it's actually really sad. Anyway, let's see how we can get out of this. So then I got back and I found this guy, Dr. Richard Cheng. He's an American trained uh, Chinese doctor who now works in Wuhan and 
in Wuhan. And he writes this on the 5th of March. So that's like uh, 10 days ago. Um, he describes a patient that came in with a family and all this stuff. And they administered their vitamin C therapy. And she recovered amazingly. And she went home, I don't know, about 10 days later. None of her, patient, none of her family members that were on oral vitamin C even got the virus or got sick so that they had to end up in hospital. They were all fine. Then you can see there is a YouTube um, link. And of course, um, I was very quizzy. I wanted to look at the YouTube. So then I clicked that link and guess what? Interesting stuff. I clicked another link of him and it was also there. So it took me like half an hour and then I found Dr. Richard Cheng's um, video channel. So, as I've said before, you have to dig for these things. You really have to dig deep. So, if you want to, um, if you want to know more about this in an easy way, go and look at his videos. They are amazing. They're really, really interesting. Um, and, and, and listen to what he has to say. Hopefully, they'll still be around. Hopefully, you won't find a black screen. Can it be this easy? Um, is it really medical science or is it just some, some voodoo that these, you know, a couple of weirdos have thought of? Let's have a look. This is a paper that came out by the group of orthomolecular medicine doctors. Um, one, two, three, four, six articles all written now, now from the situation in Wuhan. And guess what? If anyone, the Chinese now have got the T-shirt, they know how to handle this thing. Because if they can handle it, can handle it we in Namibia should also be able to handle it. Um, this carries on. There's another one, two, three, four, five. So we've got like 12, 12 articles, all less than a month old. And this is the journal, the nutritional medicine in the author molecule. You've got the website at the bottom. So for anyone of you and any one of the doctors that might look at this, please go and have a look and, and find out more for yourself. Now, if these guys write an article, you normally want it backed by reputable, educated professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, have a look at this list. Um, it's basically a totally international panel. I can believe that these guys are really trying to do their best. And I believe they really want to help people. And they want to take that old knowledge that Klenner and Co. started many, many years ago. And they want to develop it for today's use. So have a look at this bunch. They, they're a really amazing group. And I believe they are very valuable for us people today. Okay, here comes a crunch. Can we get the stuff in Namibia? Is it even available? I bought this stuff like two weeks ago. It cost me less than 400 bucks for a 50 ml um, little bottle. You have to keep it in the fridge. And as you can see, it's got 500 milligrams of vitamin C ascorbic acid per ml. So 500 milligrams times 50 mils gives you 25 grams in that bottle. And you obviously have to inject it slowly and what, what, what. And if you need more than that, say, remember in Wuhan, they only took one of these bottles per day and it cured the patients. Now, Klenner and them used like four or six of these bottles a day. So they used huge doses. But anyway, if that can help people, surely, surely, it would be worth trying that. Good question. What is the problem? The problem is very simple. The knowledge for this stuff is not taught in today's medical environments. You have to dig for it and you have to have a knack for it and you have to love it and be interested in this. So, and obviously you need to get some training in Europe in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, um, it's much more available, um, especially in Germany, um, putting IV 
vitamin C and IV minerals and nutrients is just very common and they use it all the time. They just laugh at us. When I first heard that um, one could inject 7 grams, I thought it was a huge amount because when I spoke to my doctor friend, I said to him, where can I get vitamin C in big doses? He says, you can get a little bottle. It's got 500 milligrams. That's half a gram. One half gram. And we're talking about 25 gram. And he said to me, be careful. Don't inject more than one bottle. Clearly there is a problem. Because half a, half a gram won't do anything. You can even swallow it. Anyway. So let's go back to China. These are recent, recent reports. You can read it by yourself. If you want to look at this for longer, just put the pause button and go through this lot. Um, quite honestly, why would these people bullshit? Why would these people not talk the truth? And if you look at these results at the bottom there, um, in one study, a mere 200 milligrams of vitamin C per day resulted in an 80% decrease in death among severely ill hospitalized respiratory disease patients. Now we're talking about 10 times that amount. And anyway, coming back to this lot, here you are. This is a pretty detailed the instruction of how you should administer the slot. It even gives you the different cocktails. The so one is a 12.5 grams and the other one's 25 grams. So in other words, that brown bottle that I showed you earlier on, if you used it for the 20, it's 25 grams, um, you, you add some magnesium and you add some B vitamins and you let it run Make it for an hour, make it for an hour and a half. Now, any nurse, any sister can do that. They all know how to do this. The doctor even doesn't, doesn't even have to do it himself. Okay, there are some precautions which he can learn easily. Um, and then he could do that even while he was treating other patients. So, quite honestly, um, I believe... This should be one of the solutions for our country. It's a very, very, very affordable solution. The risk is minimal if you do it in the right way. And any doctor that, can, that has got experience in putting up trips and stuff can do it for you. You can read through these comments. I don't need I read them for you. And then there's something at the bottom. You need to read for yourself. It basically says, if you want this done, You've got a right to demand it from XYZ. You might find a doctor that refuses to do it. Um, I want to give you a funny story. My son was bitten by a black widow spider a couple of years ago. He was in Walfus Bay in the ICU and he was a 25 or 26 year old guy, strong, fit, surfing. And within six hours, he was in ICU from a little black spider that had bitten him on his back. And when I got there late that night, um, I hardly recognized my son. He was a fever, weak idiot, not idiot, but really weak patient in the ICU. And as a parent, you, you really, it's a terrible feeling. Anyway, I had brought some antidote for the spider and I had also brought, uh, brought some vitamin C, which I asked the sister to administer. The long story short, when the treating doctor came in, he actually stopped the vitamin C because I was going to put another um, vial in because he was a treating doctor and of course he had the responsibility. Um, and then, so in other words, my son only got seven gram. Um, then we also decided not to give him the antidote. And quite honestly, after three days, my son was fine again. And some of the specialists eventually said, look, it's unheard of because normally if a black widow spider bites you, you are sick for a couple of months. Anyway, that's just on a sideline. Interesting story. My personal um, experience with some of this and quite honestly, I believe it's, it's something that one should look at. So Dr. Chang is still in China now. He's working on this uh, and he's still doing research. Um, 
some of these video links actually work so you can try them out for yourself if you in a situation where you are really sick and you are in hospital and they only have a respirator please go and get somebody of your family or get yourself somebody who can help you and demand this intravenous vitamin c it's been used in south africa by certain clinics and i'm quite sure you can actually, if you really want it, you can find somebody in Namibia who does it for you. Um, it's, a, it's a very economic treatment. It's safe and it's an amazing option that you should try for this situation. So go and speak to your doctor. Um, the interesting part as well is that if you start getting really sick and the doctor doesn't want you to go to hospital because it would, it would actually increase your risk of picking up some horrible bugs or infecting some other people. This treatment could be ad administered at home by, by the doctor overseeing some other person. Um, so there, I'm sure there are lots of options here that we could use. And it's just very, very exciting to have this and to be able to learn from these people there. Remember, I said Namibia is amazing. We've got a beautiful country. It's been raining amazingly in places. I hope the rest of the country still gets the rain as well. Let's relax, sit down, be wide awake and use our mind and not our emotions and spend time with your friends and family if you can. Um, we will stick together and the movie will be absolutely fine. So thank you very much. It's Great having um, to have the opportunity to share this with you. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. So thanks very much. Good luck and stay healthy.